Well, the weekend has come and gone. I've been in here and I've adjusted the speed of the uh, retard gear train by slackening this screw off slightly and moving this end of the speed train in for greater engagement of the arm here with the main lever. And that did the trick. Uh, I didn't have to move it far, but now the speeds are good. So that was the end of that problem. Now, as the other thing that with this shutter, the loose, the very loose fit of the, um, let's get this B lever hooked in, the front ring, the, the uh, shutter speed settings cam plate was very rattly, it was very loose, and it was down to this plate here. And this has little bayonets that lock into the lens tube at this point. Now basically, the grooves for the bayonet tabs to lock into are too wide for the little tabs. So what I've done is I just put this on a uh, I've got my staking set out and put a punch on there and basically put a little dimple on each of those tabs from the inside and that did the job nicely. So now that the front plate is a nice neat fit and uh, it's not all rattly. So that solves that little problem and basically that means that uh, I'm finished with that shutter. I just need to put the lenses back inside it and that shouldn't be too tricky because they just screw straight in. Well here we have it. There's the lens front and rear group screwed back into the shutter and this should be this should be fine now. It's um, the speed settings cam plate is nice and firm in its action. I tightened that up. There's no rattle because the uh, front plate here now holds the everything back firmly. And that solves those little issues with that shutter. Of course I've still got the problems to deal with with the body. And the problem with the body. Well... I've got to get these struts out of this body so I can do something about the lack of spring tension on these arms. What it appears to me is that the bellows are held to the back of the front standard. From the inside with four screws, one in each corner. So I suspect that if I undo those screws, the bellows will drop back into the housing. And I want to see if that gives me access to any screws up on the inside here and here. So that I can hopefully lift out the strut assembly from the body. So that's the next thing to do, is get to those screws and see if they'll come loose first of all and if they will come loose whether that will get me where I want to be well it's certainly coming loose Right, well that's all four screws loose. One has just fallen out and the bellows do push back into the body. So I'll recover those screws before I they drop out and I'll lose them. One more.
That one's blowing hard to get. Now I've got it. Okay. So what have we got here? Well there's the bellows collapsed back into the body. There's a felt spacer or washer or light trap between the bellows and the body. And what I can see here are three screws here, here and here. And the same on the other side, here, here and here, which look like they hold this frame in place. So I'm going to undo those screws next and see if that gets me in. Let's see if I can get to these screws. My screwdriver is too short really, I can't get any purchase on that. I'm going to have to find a longer driver. See if this will help me. Yeah, that's the answer. The other one was just too short for me to uh, get any... get sufficient grip on the screwdriver. Was getting at them at the right angle is the problem. That one screwdriver could be with do with being a bit longer for that purpose. Of course I don't have one. Let's get these other two easy ones out and then I'll go and uh, review my options. That screw's a bit misshapen. Okay, so we'll get those screws out of the way. And I'm going to need a longer screwdriver to get to the last two. The ones down at the bottom corner there, I just do not have the reach to get to those. But, where there's a will, there's a way. This screwdriver will do if it's not too wide. No, that's fine. One. This one's slightly harder to get to because of the angle of the uh, bracket that holds the, the spring that holds the front of the camera closed, or it would open it. That's coming loose. That one will be hard to get back to for the same reason. In fact, the head on it's not a very good, pretty shape, so I'd say that it fought them at the factory. I've got it loose enough now, I might be able to get at it from a better, another angle. 
Yes, yeah, it's not good though. I'm just... I'll be able to show you the problem in a second when I get this screw out. It's a, okay. Right, so the problem is this spring here. This spring's job is to help swing the front door open. And it's up on the brackets. And those brackets were stopping me accessing the screw, that which was down in here. I couldn't get at it from a good angle because of the obstruction there. Okay, so that's our camera body. Pretty much empty as far as these things go. I mean, I'll have to clean the dust and the dirt out of that. But that's not what I need to deal with. What I'm looking at is these springs in the top corners on both sides here. That arm's just fallen away neatly, that's good. The other side too, the same, presumably. How's that hooked in? Yes, that lifts off too. Okay. So I've got my arms, and this is the problem. This spring is too lackluster. Yeah, same on the other side. Now they probably were always undernourished, but they just don't have enough. And this is sticky. You can see that, that this spring here, at the rest position, it's, it's hardly even touching the post. So there's my, my problem for holding the front up rigidly. While I've got this here, I need to deal with my focus mount too, of course. And I might deal with that first, just so I've got all of this clean and ready to go when I put these arms back in place. But, uh, fortunately, everything looks doable. Now on a retina, normally I'd just be able to stretch this open to get these things apart. And can I do it here? Let's see. Yes, I can. So I can lift that out. Put the door to one side, put those other problem pieces to one side. And look at my focus mount here. So the outer helical is coupled to this pointer and so forth here. The scale stays static. Instead of the scale turning against a fixed pointer, we have a pointer turning against a fixed scale. So I'll take the scale off first because I don't need that in my way. I'll see if I can get that off there. Uh, yes, I can wriggle that off there. That's okay. So that's my scale ring there. I'll put that with its two screws over there. And here I've got the inner and outer helical. Is there a hard stop on here? It doesn't look like there is, so I should be able to revolve this around all this way until the whole inner comes out. Now what I'm making a note of here is at what point this is hard down. So my lever here, my focus lever, comes up against the post at this point. That appears to be a rivet. It doesn't look like a screw. And at that point, I'm just about down flush here, I think. Oh, there's a spacer ring. Let's get rid of that. I didn't even know that was a spacer ring. That can go on the back of the shutter. Okay. So now I can see my inner helical and my outer helical. And I'm looking at the, the height difference. I need to make sure that I know 
where they go back together relative to each other. This is all riveted together. It looks like the outer helical will come unscrewed. I'm not sure of that. I need to get that. I need to know my my measurement, if you like, so I can. I so I'll know when I go to put it back together that I've put it back together in the right place. So with this focus lever hard up against the stock, I'll use some feeler gauges to measure how much further out the inner helical sits and we will start what have we got here that's 12 there what's that like definitely smaller than that let's try six bigger than six let's give this Seven. Yeah, seven or eight thousandths of an inch, I'd say. We'll try eight. Oh, yeah, definite drag there. So, eight in my case, the inner helical sticks out proud of the outer helical by eight thousandths of an inch, which would be about what's that? Point, uh, point two. Point one five two yeah. Yeah, point two. Okay, that's good to know. Now I want to see I want to mark my inner helical so I know which is the top. So I'm just going to put a little mark there. And this will probably rotate all the way if I'm lucky. I might not going to might be that I'm not going to be lucky today. Now it's moving. Right. Okay. So it's it's gone. It's got there. So it's it did come out. Right. Let's roll that inner helical out. Oh, that's sticky. Now I think I'm pretty good here, I'm just making sure that there are not two, I, I'm pretty sure from the fineness of the threads that there's not two positions I could have the outer helical in. Let me just check what that gap is. Is that 30? Yeah, about 30 thousandths of an inch. That's hard round to the stock. Okay, so that's good. So it means I can probably unscrew this. Yeah. Right. So there I've got my three components apart. And I can clean these because the grease is very nasty and sticky. And uh, I'm just be, be using naphtha most likely. And on a cotton bud. You get all the old grease off and then reassemble them with some fresh helical grease and then I can turn my attention to that front standard problem. Well I've cleaned this up and at the moment it's just dry fitted so it's got no lubrication in here at all but that's moving quite well. One thing you need to watch is that the pointer here, this scale ring is not especially round and it's easily bent out of shape. So this pointer 
will rub against it in places on here in the movement and as a result it will make the action quite stiff and you can see the marks on the inside where this thing has been scuffing previously so I'm going to have to see if I can get this thing to conform to circular a little bit better I think I can see by the pattern of it that it's not a complete circle that it's flattened off both sides presumably because it needs to in order to um, clear the the mechanism the folding mechanism but there's certainly some there's a bit of a catch here somewhere something's catching it looks to be here yeah that's a certainly it so if I tighten those two screws up so that even does it tend to stay where it's put yeah it's definitely definitely a problem there yeah that's better so it's just deformation of this scale because it's aluminium because it's not even um, particularly symmetrical and it, it, it's just been bashed so it's probably out of ground and doesn't work as smoothly as it should but otherwise that works fine it's a bit stiff right at the uh, one meter end of the scale but only right at the one e meter end of the scale well I wouldn't be concerned about that it's fine the rest of the scale so that needs to be lubricated but otherwise the focus mechanism is working nicely so I'll pop that to one side let's have a look at this So the pins that go through at the corners here So all of this stuff I really want to clean because it's icky with old grease I want to get all of that off there because a lot of that is just stickiness that um, will not help the free movement of things And then I've got to deal with these two side arms I'll see if I can get that one undone oh it's not enthusiastic so it is screwed in though it is only just screwed in so I'll assume that that's not locked in with any lacquer it's got some black paint around the tip of the head I don't know whether that's paint that began its life there or whether it's stuff that's scuffed onto it no it's coming loose there's the arm and there's the spring in question now it simply lacks enough power now I can tighten it up by um, bending, the, bending the ends of the spring but I suspect that's not really going to make an awful lot of difference I think the simple answer is that it's just it's not a heavy enough spring I'm not convinced that this arm was ever that shape so that's probably bent it was probably straight through there and that won't be helping its action at all if it's trying to uh, pull sideways that'll certainly not be helping it I've got to clean all these parts up and see what I'm doing So how do things come to be so uh, manufactured with materials that are not particularly adequate for the job? Well, it's possible that the prototype was made with a, 
a heavier spring perhaps a spring that was described as the same thing but when they came to make the production run they ended up with something else perhaps the only material they could get was something similar but not quite the same and someone made the uh, decision that it would be good enough and time has proven that it wasn't that's the sort of thing that happens in production situations is that a product is designed prototypes are made specifications are let and all the rest of it and something some component some material is either no longer available or not available temporarily or a rival supplier says they can do you something nearly as good or as good but slightly different much cheaper and now and someone makes the decision that that's what they need to do either to save money or to save time um, but these sort of things happen in a production situation decisions have to be made and every now and then a mistake will be made and the mistake may not the effects of the mistake may not show up for a very long time I'll just pop this back together and see how it works dry without making any changes to the spring at all It's just, it's just lacklustre. I mean, in its rest position, when it's doing virtually nothing, um, you know, where it'd be holding the strut up, there's virtually no tension on that at all. By the time you get to here, it's doing absolutely nothing. But there's not enough... This, this has to lift up, because basically what it's trying to do is pull up into this groove here. Pull up so that it's pulling tight and forcing the, the struts to it to stay in position like that but it just doesn't have enough power on that spring I'll have a look around and see if I've got any springs that look like they might make a better job of that it's also possible that if I put a sleeve around the inside here too that will cause that spring to work it depends very much on whether the spring whether the action of the spring is such that one coil is deforming more than the rest it doesn't look like it I think that that spring is really just lacklustre. It just needs more more oomph than that. I could uncoil it, which basically means bringing its set position back round to something other than that. It's probably taken a set simply from being in the folded position in the camera for. 70 or 80 years, I mean, that'll do it. Alright, well, I think I know a little bit more about that now, and I've got a rough idea what I want to achieve.